I want to salute you, homie, you know, for, for building your own thing and doing your own thing, creating your own platform, your own website. With my boy Alfred, I'm Mr. Talaferro.com. Mr. Talaferro.com. Right now, I'm about to go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see you with your logo on your mics. From you rock with Mr. Talaferro.com. Y'all go to Mr. Talaferro.com, it's going down. My biggest gift is my voice. It allows me to speak to the culture. Now, right now, you're turning up. On MrTalaferro.com, shawty. What's going on? What's going on? It's yours truly, Alfred Talaferro. You're turned into Mr. Talaferro TV. And I'm introducing something new. This is something I've always dreamed about doing. I always dreamed about having the uh, amount of subscribers or the amount of a following to, to, what it, to do what it takes to start my own podcast. And this is episode one. Yes, and a lot of people questioning why am I doing this? Why won't you just go out and get a job as a local reporter? Um, I will get into great detail all of that and why I've chosen to go this route. Now, I want you to understand a few things. I am not about to be the boring blogger with nothing to say, with no controversial comments. It's not who I am. My job and my responsibility to you is to keep it honest with you at all times. I'm going to give you my honest opinions at all times. I don't feel like I got to conform to anybody. Listen, you subscribe to me for a reason. You subscribe to me because you want truth. You want reality. And to be quite frank with you, I wasn't giving you that through the, the, the little five, ten minute blogs where I'd be talking about a, um, an artist, a DJ Khaled, a, a Kevin Gates, a black youngster, or, um, or whoever it might be. I wasn't giving you that. A young Dolph and Yo Gotti, I wasn't giving you that. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of it was clickbait. A lot of it was just trying to get you guys. I was telling my truth, but I was giving it to you in short stints just to, to, to get subscribers. And it came to the point, I'll be honest with you, what happened was I was getting strikes on my account. And um, it just was corny. And I just came to a man that that's not who I want to be. I want to do this podcast and just be my own person and um, not even put myself in that place to be getting strikes. I ain't trying to live like that. I'm trying to grow myself and tell my honest truth to you. And I know it's going to take a little bit more time. I know I'm going to probably take my step a half a step backwards. But I want to be able to give you podcasts to listen to in the gym, whenever you're doing, working out, you know, got extra time on your hand. I want to be able to give you podcasts. Just to rock with, you know, I want to be an honest guy. And I'm going to give you this podcast in form of sports, in forms of um, hip-hop, the culture, music industry, all of it. We're going to talk politics. A little bit I'm learning as I go. We're going to talk everything. I'm going to have some interviews. I got special guests lined up throughout my podcast series. I'm not sure how many episodes I'm going to do in this series. But right now I'm rocking with the name of the Be Teleferro podcast. Be honest with you. I don't want to get in any disputes with, with branding and names of other companies. So I'm just going to say Teleferro podcast. I know there's not another Teleferro podcast out there. So that's the name I'm rocking with. And I want to give you, this whole podcast is about me. This is pretty much telling you my truth, who I am, what, what, what what's, what's up with my life, and why am I doing this. So. All my life, I've been a dreamer. All my life, I've wanted to do what's been impossible to me. Now, I want you to understand, as I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, not the biggest home, pretty small home. Um, two parents, had both of my parents. Not going to get into some of the hardships I've, I had as a child. Uh, mom and dad didn't have the best relationship growing up. Very rocky, seen a lot of stuff. Didn't have the best relationship with my pops. Um, but when my mom and dad's relationship got better as they got older and they matured and some of the stupid shit they were doing when they were younger got better, my relationship with my dad got better. As simple as that. Simple as that. Um, dad's a good good parent, about to turn 60 years old this year. Mom's a great mother, uh, my backbone. And um, I was raised through them. I'm going to give y'all everything about me I can so y'all can know what y'all looking forward to and, and who I am. If you want to grow with me, you got to know who the hell I am. I don't expect you to subscribe or watch these podcasts and not know who the hell I am. Um, my dad is the type of guy, he always made sure the bills were paid. Look, He ain't buying me no Jordans. He ain't buying me this, that. He ain't getting my hair cut every two, three weeks. 
I'll, I'll give you get more into haircuts in a minute. But my dad was the type of person. Look, you're gonna have food on the table. You're gonna have lights on. You figure out everything else. You're gonna have a a bed to lay your head down at night. You figure out everything else if you want it. You know. That's where I probably trying to go ask my mom for a little extra money for some shoes. But a lot of times I didn't have it. I remember in the in the fifth grade, I want to say in the fifth grade I had some Payless shoes, and um. And I called him some KGs, and one of my friends bust me out about it in the middle of the class. Told everybody, what are you talking about? These not no KGs. They're some Payless shoes. You know, and I thought I could get away with it, but that's just who I was. I, I just didn't have it like that. I would never go as far to say I was poor because, you know, poor, you know, when you use that word poor, I, 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 when I associate the word poor with something I associated with homeless, I was never homeless. But I didn't have it all, you know. And back to, to classroom embarrassment. When I was in the seventh grade, this is a story about me growing up, and it's, it's relative, trust me, just rock with me. When I was in the seventh grade, towards the end of the year, second semester, maybe towards March, when it was warming back up, I remember this story like it was yesterday. Um, in gym class, I started to realize that my hair was, was falling out. Right and um my and what happened was I, I I don't know what happened I'll be honest with you I don't know what exactly happened I went to dermatologist after dermatologist um, I started to gain a plug in my head and I'm like oh, what the hell well, you know I'm, I'm a healthy kid I, I I'm in I'm in gym I go to gym every day I I exercise like you know my immune system should be high I ain't never had no problems before. My hair was starting to fall out, and before I knew it, I had a plug in my head, and no hair would grow back. Now, remind you, I just told you earlier on, I didn't get my hair cut like that. My daddy wasn't the type to go get your hair cut every week, two weeks. We go every month, sometimes five weeks. So that hair grew in that, that spot. They called it a plug. It became more relevant. Now, uh, to make To add to matters... Another one grew right next to each other, and a lot of people called them eyeballs in my head. Now, I want you to understand, as a 7th grader, 12 years old, 13 years old, I want you to understand going to school every day. Um, on, it was on the, I believe it was on the right side of my head, you know, going to school every day with plugs in your head. Going to school every day with plugs in your head. It was the worst thing ever. I still can, you know, I still rub in my head sometimes just to be like, damn, I can't believe I, you know, went through that. If it happened today, I'd go bald. I'm just letting y'all know that now. Before I get into the, that, that whole jinxing game, if it happened today, I'm going bald. I'm also a grown man who can pay for a haircut now. And I don't have to worry about waiting on my dad to drive me to get my haircut. But if it happened today, I definitely would go bald. But I just want you to understand, every day, man, people I didn't know, every day my life was just a laughing stock. I was probably the biggest laughing stock of my friends. One of the top five, top ten of, of every school I went to. Um, I kept those plugs for about two, three years before it actually went away. But I want you to understand, man, I'm a kid, man. I'm 12, 13 years old. Supposed to be one of the best spots in my life. I'm young. I shouldn't have responsibilities. But, you know, man, it was one of the worst times of my life, man. Hard for me to ever get, get a female attracted to me because she couldn't. We young. Images matter to us, right? Reputation matter to us. It was hard for me to ever get a chick to just buy into me because she was so embarrassed. She thought about having to deal with a guy with plugs in his head, and it was tough for her. So imagine that. It was just tough to ever sustain a relationship with a chick. You know, back in the day, it was hard to just smash a chick because it was hard getting a chick for me. So, um, my plugs, after a while, they, they grew back in. I told you about two, three years. Um, in the midst of this as well, in the seventh grade, eighth grade, we, I used to fight a lot. I used to fight a lot. And I'm not the whole fighter just because I'm a UFC guy and nothing like that. No, it's just we fought for everything. It's like we, just, we, get, we checked so much. Again, like I said, I had the biggest target on me with my plugs. But we checked so much, man. Every couple of days, you'd be like, damn, I'm tired of this checking. You say this about my mama. You, you know, you say this about me. The whole, especially when the whole class laughing at you. When the certain, the certain chicks laugh at the jokes and you get embarrassed at the cafeteria. Certain, you, you want to fight that person. And I we used to go 10 seconds a lot, you know. And I got, you know, I can't believe some of the 
listen, when I listen to younger siblings now, I, I can't, they, they, they can't fathom fighting as many times as I did. I've definitely had 20 fights in my seventh grade year, and I'd say I was probably 10 and 10, something like that. Probably 16, 17 fights, close, upwards, close to 20 fights. And that was about 50%. I won some. I lost a lot, though. I remember one time I got my ass whipped in the middle of the classroom, got suspended for five days, put the whole grade on lockdown. It was embarrassing. I was actually working on a nonviolent essay at the time. You know, I was about to get submitted for an award. And but and my teacher was like, well, that was pretty violent of you, even though I got my ass whooped, you know. So I got kicked out of that competition. And there you go. And listen, man, I got, but I did get some licks in on the guy. They were holding both of us back, but I got loose. And I got all my licks back in on, on, on homie uh, while, we, while he was being held. But I got my ass with that fight. You know, I lost that fight. That was all I took. So fast forward to high school, and it's always been something that I've knew. Um, I had a friend, friend of mine, tell me, "Look, sports, sports. It's always been something I knew." And um, when I was growing up, sports just made sense to me differently. This is honest, man. I'm not lying to you. I'm, I'm an honest dude, man. Some of y'all gonna rock with it. Some of y'all gonna think I'm just talking tomfoolery. But this is the honest truth, man. Sports are something that comes different to me. This music stuff, that that hip hop stuff, it don't come to me. I'm just learning it on the fly. I watch a lot of interviews, Breakfast Club, Hot 97. I watch a lot of interviews. But sports is something that comes natural. I understand it. Like, I've always understood it differently. Like, I understand the little nuances of free agency. You know, I play 2K a lot. So the, the GM mode, I'm the guy that instead of going and playing against my friends, I go get in the franchise modes and I go make – I go sim – all my 2K heads I know what I'm talking about here I go sim the first season And I couldn't wait to free agency Because I understood the nuances of salary caps Numbers, I'm good at math I understood all the little nuances Of, uh, of numbers and NBA salaries and, and free agency and just sports in general That I can always go figure things out and, and make trades And end up with these superstar teams After simulating the first season In the off season I can make dream teams You know, pull off fantastic trades so, 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 so when I'm growing up, I was the go-to sports guy, right? Everybody wanted to have those debates with me. I was just one of those guys. I can out-debate you, and I always made sense. You know, I was a Laker fan. Keep in mind, growing up, and my, I'm a Kobe fan, so my team was usually always good. The Lakers were pretty much throughout my, my career. They were always relevant, and they were always borderline good. I, I was, you know, five years old when the Lakers won their first championship in 2000. And um, I caught good Laker basketball, the Andrew Bynum, Pal Gasol era while I was in high school. So I was able to catch rings in high school. And um, Kobe was pretty much always always relevant. Yeah, he was always relevant throughout my, my upbringing. So um, keep, in mind, keep that in mind about me and sports. And uh, one of my pals, one of my friends told me, man, you're going to work at ESPN. You're going to be a broadcaster one day. You're going to be a broadcaster. And, and, and I, he kept telling me that. And it started to stick with me. And I told my dad, told my dad, man, I'm going to work at ESPN one day. And, and come on now. I'm from Memphis. I'm from the hood. You know, a kid saying I'm going to work at ESPN, to us that seems unfathomable, you know. And we just don't dream big enough, you know, as a culture. That just doesn't sound believable. Work at ESPN. ESPN seems like this unbelievable place. Trust me. I know. It seems like this unbelievable place that you don't get to. We just see these guys on TV. We don't understand the nuances of how many positions that that place holds and how big the Walt Disney Company actually is. We don't understand that, right? So, so keep that in mind. Throughout high school, um, I, ESPN was something I knew I, I, I would try to get to one day in my life. Um, I did not know it would be that early in my life. I'll get to it in a second. So I graduate high school. But uh, before I graduate, right, right, right in the midst of graduation season, I'll say March. I'll say March. Um, after everybody got accepted into colleges, all my friends in my class, and I was, in, I was in smart classes. I was always a smart guy. I just was bad as hell. I was really smart, though. I was just bad as hell. I always had ends and use, but I still hit a 3.8, 3.9 on the, in a minute. I think I averaged a 3.8 in high school. You know, just smart, just bad, man. I'm just telling y'all my truth. And I'll never forget it. Fourth period at 1045 in my, in my 12th grade year. Everybody was talking about the colleges that they were going to. And keep in mind, I'm from Memphis. A lot of people in my city don't want to leave the city. So I'm in Memphis. 
And in, in my tw- at, at, at the 10:45 in my my 12th grade year in fourth period, and the guy named um, Jason Kelly's class, I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this guy. I'll never forget this class. I tell my class, I get accepted into the University of Tennessee, and I start to tell people, I'm thinking about attending this university. I'm pretty close to positive. I'm gonna go get this thing a trip. I'm gonna go to the, give this. this it was called a jump trip at the time, and I'm so, like, I'm gonna go go to this trip. And when I come back, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go to this school. Unless I see something that just literally turns me off about the university. I want to go to this school. I want to give it a shot. And I have friends left and right, you know, telling me you're crazy, laughing at me, you know, saying you'll be back. They were literally betting on class on if he's going to make a semester or um, if he's going to make a year. Nobody got past a year with me. Everybody said I'll be definitely be home in a year. Probably wouldn't make it past a semester. He'll be home. He won't last without his friends. You know, I have friends that would, as far as they go, is a college two and a half hours away. As far as a lot of my my friends will go, it's um, a lot of people that I knew would be two, two and a half hours away. That'd be like the TSU in Nashville, Tennessee, or the MTSU in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, both about two and a half hours away in Nashville. So that was the farthest that anybody I knew would go. So for me to say I was going five, five and a half, six hours, keep in mind I don't have family in Knoxville where the University of Tennessee is located. So this is a stretch. This is a stretch for somebody like me. I don't have the, the money, you know, to pay for stuff. I didn't have any money at the time, really. I worked at Five Guys Burgers and Fries. Uh, it was a stretch for me. It was a stretch to, to even consider a university like this, you know, had a racist background. You know, the University of Tennessee has racist roots. And a lot of, even my people at church told me, you know, this is a bad decision on your end. This is a bad decision. Parents questioned my decision. My own parents. Mama, mama wanted me to stay home because she's mama. She didn't want me to go far. Daddy actually had doubts in me. You know, he knew his son was a pretty, pretty motivated kid. But I don't know if he knew I was dismotivated. So, so I decided to, I'll get sold on the University of Tennessee. I get here. And, um. You know, I, I I pick sports journalism, right? You know, this is what you all I know is sports. I keep in mind, I told you, I really understood sports, even though I only played sports for one year, AAU basketball, and I wasn't that good. I've always been around sports. I've always played video games that that revolved around sports, and I always hooped. I always was outside hooping. I had a goal. I just wasn't that good. You know, I just wasn't athletically gifted. You know, it is what it is. It's balanced out in life. <laughs> But anyways, I um, get to college. I'm trying to see where can I get my hand in. You know, it was a new beginning for me. I really needed that new beginning in college. And anybody can considering going to college, go for it. You know, it it literally it pushes you. It makes you think ways that you never you never thought before. So go for it. Really go for it. I'm, I'm telling y'all this. Let's listen to me on this. Go for it, regardless of what it is. Any institution. If you have the finances, go for it. And the University of Tennessee was paid for. Now, I don't want you thinking I was just that smart of a guy where it was paid for because I'm like I got like a 4.0. I did like a 25 on my ACT. No, I had a 22 on my ACT. GPA was about 3.5, 3.6, maybe 3.8, somewhere along the lines. But anybody can pull off a good GPA. That's not why they accepted me. They accepted me because the school I went to in Memphis, Tennessee, was a minority school. It was it was a predominantly black school. Let me say that. And um, predominantly black school, but minority to the University of Tennessee. Like, uh, we don't. Have, they didn't have. They don't have a. The black percentage here is not that high. And um, they do a. They do this certain scholarship where they'll pay for everything. They're trying to increase diversity, so they'll pay for everything, tuition, um, everything, housing for four years. So, um, hell, I didn't even have that money as for schools in Memphis. So to me, I, that was the argument I can always come back with my parents is that Memphis ain't paid for it. Now, granted, I would have been able to stay at the house in Memphis and go to school from the house, which means I wouldn't have to worry about room and board. But I'm like, no, let me go ahead and take that. And I'll still get a refund check back. you know. So I took a chance on UT. I get there my freshman year, and I'm trying to see where can I get my hands in, what pots. And uh, first things first, I, I, the first opportunity I see is a, you know, in one of my – my 175 journalism classes, anybody at the University of Tennessee know what I'm talking about. It's a beginnings journalism course that I had to take as a freshman. They tell me about an opportunity. We have to do some kind of outside activity. I sign up for something called TNJN. It's a writing, writing course. and it's, it's, a, it's a writing outside project to get you involved in sports. I signed up for the sports department, obviously, sports journalism major. 
So I, I write a couple articles and I love that feeling, having some posted on the, online. I'm not a writer. I'm not. I wasn't like a writer in school, so this is all new to me. Seeing my article online, posting that is still the first picture you ever see on my Instagram account. I'm that 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 was crazy to me. So at the time, I didn't realize it was just that small. I was only they only had me doing grades on like our performances on football games. So my responsibility wasn't that much, but it gave me confidence. And then I, I found this opportunity called the Volunteer Channel. That same semester. So I was able to work a few shows, get my hand in. I was just asking for any opportunity possible, going for it, you know, so allocate my time. Um, any time from like when I get out of class about 3.30 at the latest, 4 o'clock. Any time from like 4 to 6, 7, Monday to Thursday was, was definitely allocated to, to, to doing work, to doing stuff, to doing like writing or, or going on shows and understanding the game. So I got accustomed to the journal, the volunteer channel. And by the way, on Friday, Saturdays, I was partying. I was partying. Be honest with you. I enjoyed my college career. But um, keep it moving. Um, end of the semester, right? I'm like, what, what, you know, what's next? You know, I enjoyed myself as a, just, just a person on a show that had producers, that had talent. I was neither, neither of the two. Um, and we, we find out that the producers all graduate. So I'm like, wow, this is an opportunity of the lifetime. You know, the producers graduate. Maybe I can come in. And it's literally the show's going to go away if it's not, if no one else picks it up. So me and a couple other chicks, two of my closest friends to this day, we, um, we pick up the show. We pick up the show and we become the producers. Um, I changed the show entirely. I changed it to a debate show. I changed it to the, I'm a big first take guy. Keep in mind, I said first take. I keep it. I want you to. I, I um, I changed it to a, a debate show. I wasn't feeling. I was not feeling the whole um, setup of the show as is. So it was my idea to change it to a debate show. Um, we we got producers. We, we're all producing, and I'm a talent as well. So I get accustomed with with the volunteer channel, and I'm starting to learn the producing side of it. The show is specifically called Sports Mecca. So I understand the producing side of it, and, and I'm growing. And while in the midst of me growing with this, with this network, college is changing my life. I'm becoming a man. I'm dealing with problems, you know. Um, I, I had to find out EBT. I had to get EBT, you know, and before that, you know, it's like, so I wasn't working a lot because I'm always producing. You know, I worked a few hours, but it was just to, you know, get ends meet. But it was, you know, money was, was getting killed by food. So I was able to get EBT, and, you know, this is the first time I'm understanding that, man. Every dollar counts. You know, I, you, you knew it marginally in, in high school, but not the way you figure it out in college when you ain't got parents to call on. You know, and, and this is where parents can't count your money because they don't see you. So they don't understand stuff coming up out the blue. I don't have a car in college my first two years. So uh, they don't understand subject stuff that comes up. And I'm a first-generation college student. My daddy went to a college, but I'm not sure if he finished or not. But my daddy went to a college. And, um, you know, you know, and just go. I, I understand stuff. I, you get you get a better understanding of life. You see how how stuff can get hard, man. You, you, you do. So I'm going growing as a man. Again, I tell you, I'm a, I'm a party guy. Weekends, I, I turn up with my friends. Had the time of my life. I recommend college to anybody. I still go to college parties to this day. Not as many as I used to. I had to buckle down on that, but I'm still around a college atmosphere. I just want you to understand that. So, 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 so it's it's big. College is big. At the University of Tennessee, we had a small black community. But we, we got everybody to come on one accord for our party. So our parties were really good. No problems. It was the first time I was introduced to a, an atmosphere where people, people weren't getting shot at parties. I'm from Memphis. Every party I went to, I'm from, I lived in Raleigh. Every party I went to got shot up. Every party. That's how it ended. That's how you knew a party was ending in Memphis. It was get, it, because it ended because of a fight, a badass fight. Or somebody getting shot. That's just how it was. So to see parties actually have a time that they end and be like, whoa, wow, it's really time to go home. And allow me to, you know, be able to drink at my disposal and have fun and, and walk around clubs because I knew everybody there. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was an amazing thing. So college goes on. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a junior now. I'm a end of junior year. I'm in the summer heading into my senior year, right? I'm a, 
You know, what's next? I got one more year to figure this damn thing out. Um, so I, I applied to ESPN. I had applied a couple times already. This is my resume was at the at the at the peak though. I had already had local channel experience, two local internships, and um, local television stations, stations here in Knoxville. I had shot so many events. I was the guy. I used to literally go to basketball games. This is a fact. I used to go to basketball and football games with media passes that I got as the producer of that show, you know, of Sports Mecca, and. I'd be the only person there. I'd set up my mic, the camera equipment, and go get used to talking in front of thousands of people. And I wasn't doing local Joker uh, basketball games, it's especially basketball games. It's, you're talking about in a sellout crowd, you're talking about 20,000 people. So I'd just sit there and let people get accustomed to my face. And they'd be like, what the hell is he doing? He ain't got no business being right there. And I learned the game. Learn where you got to stand. Learn where you can go, where you cannot go. Learn camera. Learn shots. You know, talk to players, talk to these anchors in it, you know, when I get that chance from ESPN and make those connections. So you keep that in mind. You, you, you keep going. And at that, that end of that, that summer, you know, I finally get a call back from ESPN. They asked me, am I in, still interested in an internship for the fall semester? I'm just applying. I didn't think I really had a shot, but just go for it, guys. I'm just, this is the, the lesson in this. Just go for it. You never know. You never. I'm going for it with this podcast. I'm, you never know how things can end up. And hopefully if you grow with me, you'll see this in the future. You'll see what – I'm doing this podcast for a reason. I want to be able to go back. I want this documented online. I want the date there, some benefits you have with YouTube and posting videos. I want this date here because I want to be able to go back to this and for us to talk about this. You know, everything's so visual, visual now. and We can literally go back and, and listen to this audio again. You know, and one day this will be one of those historic recordings. He really spoke all this shit into existence, you know. So I get a call from ESPN. Do an interview process. I'm nervous as hell. You know, they're asking me all types of questions. My sports knowledge is good, but I didn't know it had to be this good. You know, I feel okay about the interview, but I tell the guy at the end of the interview, you know, hey, if you hire me, listen, I know I'm a, listen, I, I know I don't talk the best. I know I got a little hood slang in me. Listen, if you give me an opportunity, to intern with your company, you're making the best decision of my your life, and nobody's gonna work harder. And I had like a little Tebow like speech in me. Um, anybody remember the infamous Tebow speech in Florida? You know what I'm talking about. I told the guy nobody's gonna work harder than me. The rest of the rest of my tenure at ESPN, if I got this internship at ESPN, nobody's gonna work harder than me. I'm going to give it my all. And I think that's what stuck with him. Because honestly, my interview wasn't all that. It just wasn't all that. I'll be honest with you. It was okay at best. I've had way better interviews. But I think it stuck with him. So I get this position at ESPN. So I'm able to live my dream. At 21 years old, I was able to do what I wanted to do, what I thought I'd be working my whole life to get to. And this changed my life. I thought my whole life was predicated on getting back to ESPN. I'm not ruling that out. I'm not going to rule that out right now. Maybe I go back to ESPN. But it changed my life because I've seen people who actually went for their dreams. I've seen like-minded individuals, and I've seen the best of the best. So I get to ESPN. My job is to make highlights for Sports Center. That's, it's a damn cool job. I'll be honest with you. Go to work at 4, have a meeting at 5, get to sit down in a room and watch a game at night. So... I, my internship, I skipped my fall semester at, at school. I take online classes while I'm there so I can still graduate on time. That was very tough, by the way. But anyways, back to what I'm saying. I, 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 um, while I'm at ESPN, while, while, I'm, while I'm in my stay at ESPN, um, I, I, I get a game every night. This is toward the end of baseball season. So there, there's a lot of meaningless games in the fall for teams that are not in postseason contention. So... I get a few games, a few baseball games, and I'm able to watch these games and no, have no pressure on me for the highlights. Now, here and there, you'll get a guy with a no-hitter alert, and then you'll be like, oh, wow, this is a pressure game that, that's out of nowhere. This is what's not meant for me to have a pressure situation, but it just happens. Sports are just unpredictable, right? You can't predict sports. So, so I, um, with that being said, I, I get a couple games, and, and um, I – I, I learned the process. I'd be able to go talk to anchors, some people that I looked up to my whole life. The Scott Van Pelps of the world, the the John Butchergrosses of the world, and um, the the Andersons of the world. I'm sorry, I got nicknames for a lot of these people. 
It's just it just was a a great experience. The Jay Harris's of the world, the Kevin Agandes of the world, the Jonathan Coachman's of the world. Who I had a lot of respect for because I remember with you know growing up on wrestling with him and his, his little. A little bout with the rock and to be able to talk to him, somebody I, I used to look up to. And you know, to see the legacy that Stuart Scott left. And there's a couple a few other people that I'm gonna get to in a second that I looked up to that I was able I was able to work with. So I'm gonna keep it moving. During my internship I, we stayed at a um, a dorm room, you know the the it was the as diverse a, a an environment I had ever been in my whole life. So um, we were all ambitious kids. We, we went for it. This is a year ago. It's like last September. So we, we really went for our goals. And um, one thing I told them is I came here to work with uh, two shows my whole life. I, I had looked up to a few people. First things first, Stuart Scott. That's who I looked up to. He had passed away, obviously, so I wasn't able to be there with him. But after that, it was Stephen A. Smith. I learned to respect this man, his, the culture he provided, his um, lack of, of, of frightness in him, and his, in his, in his, his will, his hunger, his, um, his, his, his want, and, and his belief in self, and how unequivocally he was unafraid of, of, of stating his opinion wholeheartedly. So Stephen A. Smith was a guy I looked up to, and then when uh, Skip Bayless, I used to watch first take, actually take it back to the cold pizza days. So these are two guys I have the utmost esteemed respect for, right? So I'm able to work with these two. Um, well, I, actually, I'll tell you this: I'm in the cafeteria one day at ESPN, and we get a break every day. And sometimes we get a break. If it's too crazy, you don't get a break. But you're watching sports. How much can you complain? But it does get stressful. I'll tell you that. I, I beat Stephen A. Smith, and, and he's in line. He's on the phone, as usual. This guy's always on the phone. He's always busy. I walk up to him, and I tell, I tell him, sir, Stephen A. is actually a tall person. He gets slept on how tall this guy is. Former Hooper. He was a point guard in college. I walk up to him and say, sir, I, I, you, you're somebody I looked up to my whole life. Uh, I've dreamed of, of working with you, and I, t I promise if I ever got the opportunity I tell you that that you are my idol, my role model, and um, if any way I can work with you, I, I would love to. He gets my name. He messes my name up, by the way. My name's Alfred Telefair. He messed it up. Fucked it up completely. That's beyond the point. I'm talking to Stephen A. Smith. This is a guy of my dreams. He tells me, I'm going to take your name down, and I'm going to give it to my, my producer, and if you and, um, and we're going to get you on my show. We're going to get you on first take. This is my dream now. Him and Skip Bayless, another guy that I looked up to my whole life. So he gets my name and he tells me, look, if you ever see me in uh, sitting down eating, just come up and sit down and we'll talk. And I'm going to do a podcast on my experience at ESPN's later on. I'm going to do an ESPN All podcast sooner or later. I'm actually going to jot that down right now. I'm going to do an ESPN podcast and tell you all about some of my crazy experience because I know some people out there want to hear some of the things. And I'm the crazy guy that will do what I'm not supposed to. We, we, we get in trouble for talking to people like talent and anchors that we have no business talking to. So keep in mind I'm working with the Kurt Chillins of the world for all my baseball guys out there. Great basketball players. You know, great foot, especially the football talent, the Tom Jacksons of the world. Keyshawn Johnsons, the, the Chris Berman's of the world. We get in trouble if we talk to these guys and we don't have anything that's we, – any, we're not talking about to them about anything that re related to the job or, or our assignment for that night. We get in trouble for that. You can get, you can get fired for that, man. It's, and I'm on an internship, so I'm, you know I'm on a, a thin leash. So I, I find out about um, – the producer – I reach out to the producer and he talks to me and says, come on the show. Come on the show. So I go on first take. They seat me right behind the show. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, I was in the studio, and it's not a lot of people in the studio. It's like six of us. It's the camera guys. The producer's not even in the room. They're upstairs somewhere. They see me in the studio. I'm right behind Stephen A. So I'm able to talk to Stephen A. during commercial breaks and ask him about information for this next topic. Skip would always vanish off during commercial breaks. I'm able to see how Molly, you know, is able to get her knowledge and get her, get her facts and prepare for next segments. And I'm able to listen to producers telling her the information about the next topic and how she's able to adjust on the fly. So imagine that, that experience of a lifetime. 
So I'm able to see that. And first take got me going and it got me so energized and so into this. I, I, I end up, and this is not a lie, guys. This story is true. I reach out to, to I get that experience with first take. So I'm continuing to do first take a few days a week. So I'd wake up at, so I'd wake up and do first take. The meeting for first take is at 6.30. I wake up at like 5.30, 6 o'clock, catch the shuttle bus to, for the first take. I'd be up, first take, um, I'd stay up, make highlights for first take. That's what, that was my job. They let me help out. I'd um, go to sleep at 10 or 11. I'd get home about, first take shot to 12. I'd come on one or two, go to sleep, three hours. Then have to go back in for work that night. I did that a few times. I'm not going to say every day, but I did it a few times. Come back to work at four. Then go four to one. And then... After one, I get some sleep from about two to two to five thirty six, and try to do it all again. I did that the last couple of weeks of my internship. So then I reach out to the producer of his and hers, another dream of mine, Jamel and Michael, Jamel Hill and Michael Smith, two of the younger, the younger, um, of my my inspirations that I reached out to because they were always down to earth, and they're really that down to earth in person. They're really that crazy in person, like. To a, you just want to kick it with these people because they really who they are on TV. They're not putting on a show. So they treat me to lunch my last day. They talk to me about going for my dreams and, and how to get my start in the business. But what that, that whole experience did for me, it showed me that this is real. You can really achieve your goals. I was not supposed to make first take at the age of 21. It was just not, to, or, or, or ESPN, period, at the age of 21. It just wasn't supposed to happen. But that was because I was telling myself it wasn't supposed to happen. Um, in the back of my mind, I knew I could do it. I was telling myself I could do it, and that's why it happened. But at the same time, I was getting told, I'll say that, I was getting told that it couldn't happen from people around me. But I was telling myself I could do this thing, damn it. I knew I could. So let's keep it moving. On the last day of my internship, I'm in the bathroom. I'm, I'm using the restroom. I turn around, I, you know. Zip my pants up. I turn around and Skip Bayless is getting ready for first take. It's about 10 minutes away from first take. It's about to start. He's putting on makeup, you know, getting ready for the show. Stephen A's already gone. You know, he's he's doing the show from um, New York that day. So I'm in the bathroom with Skip Bayless, somebody I looked up to my whole life. And he tells me, look, something's different about you. He's like, I see something in you, kid. Live your dreams. He tells me something is different about you. He's a 63-year-old man. 63-year-old white man telling me to live my dreams. I see something in you. Somebody I looked up to my whole life. He's telling me to go for my dreams. That's why I have the utmost respect to Skip Bayless. He's like something so... In he called me impressive. On my last day of my internship, Skip Bayless called me impressive. I reach out to him. I ask him, is there an email I can contact to him? He tells me, no. He, he tells me to come to him, talk to him after the, you know, after the first take episode is over. I talk to him. And he tells me to go for my dreams, and it meant the world for me. He tells me to go for my dreams. And I won't get into the specifics of what we, we had. I, I do that on my ESPN podcast that I'll do um, later, talking about my experiences. But he tells me to go for my dreams. And it means the world to me. So that's how I get. Um, that's why I want to really go for my dreams, because the top told me to go for my dreams. So... My internship ends. I gained so much. And no, my dream was no longer to make it to ESPN because I did it. My dream was to now impact people with my voice. Now, that's not to say I won't go back to ESPN because if this fails, I'm going to want to go back there. That's a great place, great opportunities. And I want to. if I'm going to do this sports thing in any capacity, I want to be at the best. So I'm not ruling that out. I'm not disrespecting that company in any way. I love that company. Great company. So I get back to school and I now have different goals. I want to start my own television show. So with that volunteer channel, they give me in my own show. I'm not on Sports Mac anymore. I start my own show. Had a lot of ups, had a lot of downs. Stressful, but it, it was inspiring, and I inspired a lot of younger students that you could do it. You know, and let's keep it moving. So I graduated college in May, May 12th, a few months ago. And um, one of my closest friends... I've always posted videos on YouTube, but I never monetized my account. He monetizes my account. I'm like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. But he's like, just monetize your account. What's the worst thing that can happen? So I'm understanding YouTube. I'm really like, oh, people making money off this. You go search videos. People making tens of thousands of dollars off this every month. 
So I get into blog, and that's where we're at right now. So I've caught you up to where we're at right now, and I've decided to do podcast forms. And I'm not going to limit myself to just this, but this will be one of my avenues. I talk to you guys, and I'm going to give you all a lot of podcasts. And if you stuck with me throughout this podcast, as, you know, maybe you got tired of my voice, uh, if you stuck with me throughout this podcast, trust I trust and believe that you're going to stick with me throughout this journey. And um, I want to be able to help people, and I think my voice is the way to do that. And I thank you so much if you stuck through this podcast, my first one, and you listen to me, you listen to my journey, and you understand that I'm so serious about this, guys. And my job now, I've realized my, my, what I'm here on this earth for. You know, some people go their whole life without finding their passion. I know why I'm on this earth. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. I think I know, but I don't 100% know how. My my calling on this earth is to motivate people to want to go after their dreams. That's what I'm here for. I've just had too many of those experience, experiences that you can't make up. I had too many of those experiences that you just can't make up. Sorry, my girlfriend's texting me. and I, And I understand that my calling my calling is to to motivate people is to motivate people is to motivate people and and i I know now that I'm gonna be able to do this through my podcast or I'm at least give it my a shot I'm gonna give it my all I'm gonna give this thing my all y'all I'm gonna give you a lot of podcasts um and it's not a race this is not a competition so i want to just put the, the podcast in the atmosphere and allow you to just to be able to catch up whenever you're bored whenever you got free time or i, I hope you do it when you when you just want to do it i hope you want to do it on your own so my podcast or something that i want you to be able to, to just to enjoy i'm going to do a lot of podcasts on athletes starting off I'm gonna do Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade starting off. I'm gonna do one on, on, on for the for the hip hop and music side of it. I'm gonna do one on, on DJ Khaled um, and his Major Key album. I'll do a couple other ones on a couple of musicians. I'm not sure yet, but I'm gonna keep going and just just rock with me. Just go back and listen to the podcast um, and share my podcast. Rock with me, and if there's any way I can help you, comment below. My email is always available. Afrotelefero at yahoo.com. It's Mr. Telefero at Yahoo.com. You can hit me up. Um, and I've also created a new avenue for artists to, to, to talk to me. Um, for artists who need a, a way to promote their to promote their music, I have a new thing that I'm about to launch um, where I'll be able to give them the opportunity to um, email me. I'm going to send them questions, and they're going to be able to email me responses. Um, I might have to charge a fee for that. I'm not sure, but I'm, you know, my time is valuable. I'm trying to figure this. Thing. I got rent due, y'all. I don't. My, I got rent due. I'm not. I'm not one of them bougie bloggers. You're gonna find it out quick. I got rent due, and I'm trying to do this thing off YouTube. I want to focus in on this. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to get a job. I'm gonna get nine to five. But I, what I want to do is give my dream a shot first before I quit on this thing. Want to give my dream a shot? I, I feel like I've. I worked so hard at college. I owe my dream one shot before I have to go get it. A job, and I got a degree, so hopefully it wouldn't be hard finding a job. I've actually been able to knock off a couple offers that I've had, but I want to give my dream a shot. I just feel like we always we we quit we quit too easily. I want to give my dream a shot, so that's where I'm at with it right now. Um, so I gotta pay rent, guys, and I gotta and through these interviews, I'll give you more details on this in a, mm, probably the next couple of days on what I'm gonna do with, with with artists and entertainers. It'll be dope. It'll definitely be great. Great avenue for people to um, get interviews across the web and get there and use my channel to broadcast themselves. So I think it'll be very dope. Um, I'll give you more information on that. But ways you can help me out. Subscribe to my channel. If I can't sell you on myself, with, with the way I'm trying to open myself up to you. I want to be an open book. I'm telling you my story right now. I'm not lying to you. You know, you got people out here, and I ain't talking about just bloggers or podcasts. People are lie to you. You got politicians that win probably one of the cra most craziest election seasons ever, where people are just lying to you to get your vote. I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a liar. I am not a liar. And my job is to give you the most factual information possible. Whether it's on these blogs about what's going on in the culture, or it's about me. I'm telling you my truth. That This podcast has been my truth. Everything I've told you is my truth. I'm not lying to you. You can, you can go ask any of my friends. You can, you can hit them up. 
You know, you can t- you talk to me on Twitter. I'm not lying. I'm telling you my truth, and I go for my dreams. I ain't I got one life to live. I'm 22. I ain't wasting time. I am not going to waste time. I want to go after my dreams. I want to say I live this thing called life to the fullest. I'm actually working on my health right now. I'm not a fat guy, but I could be in better shape. So I'm working on my health. You know, and I want to do podcasts on health. You know, see if we can figure stuff out there. Get in better shape. I want to live my dreams, man. A couple people that I look up to is Kevin Hart, Steve Harvey, Terrence J. These are people who I look up to. I ain't I ain't in the rappers. I ain't in the looking up to rappers. I, you know, Yo Gotti, somebody that I grew up in the, through the same apartment complexes as him. You know, I, my auntie raised me a lot in these apartment complexes where he grew up in Ridgecrest Apartments. You know, you hear it in the music. But so I'm motivated through you know his how he came up because it showed me as a kid that people actually do make or actually get good jobs from where I'm from. That's how I used to look at it as a kid, but. I'm motivated by um, the Kevin Hart's of the world, the LeBron James of the world, the Steve Harvey's of the world, Terrence J's of the world. A couple other guys I'm leaving off, but uh, they'll probably come to me in a, in, a, in a second. But it's the Stephen A. Smiths of the world, people that motivate me. So, so I want you to grow with me in this podcast. Gives me the perfect opportunity and platform and avenue to talk to you. And to grow, for us to grow together. And I want please subscribe to my channel. If I can't say you on this, I don't know what else I can do. I'm telling you my life. Um, any other ways to support me, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram. I'm trying to work on my social media pages. Um, just trying to find that balance of my personal life and, and being able to give you guys me entirely. So I'm trying to figure everything out. Um, I have it's MrTelefero.com. I'm actually about to relaunch that website soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, the podcasts are going to come quickly. I'm going to post them all to my YouTube, and I'm going to. I got a SoundCloud that's going to be available, I believe. So SoundCloud.com backslash is Mr. Telefero. Um, all podcasts will be available there. They'll also be available on iTunes. I think as of today, I'm pretty sure. I think that is the truth. I don't don't quote me on that. I just made a whole soliloquy on not lying to you so don't quote me on that but soon i believe um my podcast will be 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 available on itunes you can check them out there anything i'm missing in this podcast oh this podcast was brought to you by about damn time clothing um i'll be rocking the hats and some of my visual podcasts um the rocking the shirts as well salute the about damn time clothing if you have a brand um, I recommend that you contact me. Um, send me clothes. We can exchange addresses, um, or I'll, I'll I'll find a way to get it to me. I don't know if I'm gonna give you my my real address. Or find a way to get your clothes to me, your brands to me, or anything else, any way that we can promote your product. And if you really want to make it a consistent thing, an advertisement through my blogs or through my podcast, if you see the viewership going up, and you want to promote yourself, um, maybe we can find some kind of revenue. You know, we can find something out. We can financially figure it out. So I can be able to help you. We can help each other. So, But this podcast is brought to you by About Damn Time. Um, salute to everybody in my corner right now. I got a lot of people that's pushing for me to figure this thing out. Um, I think that's about it, guys. Um, anything else? I forget I might do another About Me podcast in the near future. About something. It'll be themed differently. Maybe about my website and how I got my start. Um, I left out my interviews. Oh, my gosh. I've been able to interview so many of the greats. Kevin Hart, Peyton Manning, Rick Ross, Hoops from I Love New York, Adrian Peterson, one of the greatest running backs of all time from the Minnesota Vikings. I feel like I'm forgetting so many names. DJ Drama, Waka Flocka, The Migos, Starlito, Young Dolph. Um, this is not showboating. I just want you to understand who I am and um, how I've been able to get a little respect in the game. Um, who else have I interviewed? Snooty Wild. Um, I've interviewed so many people. I've met Dick Vitale. Met Big Sean, met Robin Roberts on Good Morning America, met Keith Sweat, interviewed Project Pack. Sorry, I'm going through my phone right now looking at old pictures. 
trying to get y'all everything. I want to be an open book to you guys. Oh, got a great interview. My best, my biggest interview to this date is my classic interview with Webby. Uh, it's pretty popular online. You can go search, search my YouTube channel for that. I posted it a few times. Tried to maximize my views. Interview Bankroll Fresh. Rest in peace to him. Um... You just got to go through my YouTube. You you can go check out a lot of my interviews. Had the pleasure, the opportunity, been grateful enough to interview a lot of legends. Um, I'm a family guy. Got a girlfriend. and um, She's my light. And um, I just got to thank y'all for y'all time. Thank y'all. Go check me out. Go fact check me. Go look at my Instagram. You can see some of these things. You can see pictures from um, ESPN set. Pictures on his and hers. Um, pictures with Stephen A and Skip in the background. And you understand and I'm telling you the honest truth. Go look at my web. You can so see some of my website history. We used to do, I used to shut the internet down with my, my university here in Tennessee. I used to have the, the support of all my peers. And we'll shut the interview down on one day a year. Haven't did that this year yet. I'm going to do it at some point soon for this year. So stay tuned to that. And um, this is the first podcast of many. Thank you for tuning in to Teleferro Podcast. Episode one about me, I believe, is going to be the name of this bad boy. And um, I'm going to be clever with the names in the future. So it won't just be like I'm doing one on Kobe Bryant next, I believe, or soon. It won't be Kobe Bryant. It'll be some clever. Um, I think I got the name in the, in the back of my head. But anyways, thank you for your time. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted. I do not take your time for granted. Um, subscribe to my YouTube Support me any way possible I think I got a GoFundMe on the way I'm kind of mixed on that Because I, I think GoFundMe's are are serious things But thank you for your time I don't take it for granted um, This is Podcast One Teleferro Podcast Thank you for your time Salute I'm out